Our next speaker, John A. Rogers, is a Simpson Query Professor of Biomedical Engineering at Northwestern University, where he serves as the newly endowed director of the Center for Biointegrative Electronics. It's a lot of words. <clears throat> but he's been involved in research on wearable technology and their commercial development for more than 15 years. With an emphasis on soft skin interface systems, and his research has been recognized by many awards, including a MacArthur Fellowship, the Limelson MIT Prize, the Smithsonian Award for American Ingenuity, and the Benjamin Franklin Medal. Please join me in welcoming John Rogers. Thank you. Thanks for that intro. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for that uh, introduction. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, and to share with you some of the work that we've been doing, uh, kind of in the realm of uh, engineering, sort of academic science, but uh, setting the foundations for what we uh, hope and believe will be the next generation of wearable technologies. So I'll step you through some of the things that we've been working on and uh, some areas of interest, form factors, and. Uh, measurement capabilities and applications that, that we have in mind that will serve as the ba basis for products that we'll launch uh, later, this, uh, later this year. So uh, as was mentioned, my affiliation is with Northwestern University. Uh, my expertise is in material science and engineering, in particular uh, electronic materials. Uh, but I also have joint appointments in a variety of other departments, uh, most notably biomedical engineering. And I have a, an appointment in the uh, in the medical school as well, because a lot of what we do is, uh, you know, involving an intimate interface with the uh, clinical community, and we uh, really exploit that that uh, engagement and, and that set of uh, collaborations to define benchmarks and gold standards around the devices that we were uh, that we're working on. So, I'll, uh, highlight uh, two specific platforms uh, that that we're interested in. Both of them characterized uh, sort of uniquely by a soft, intimate skin interface. Uh, so thinking about moving beyond straps and bands and tapes and loosely coupled devices rattling around on the wrist to things that are really intimately coupled to the skin uh, in a way that allows the skin to be used as a precision measurement interface uh, to capture ICU grade uh, health uh, uh, and wellness uh, data, physiological status uh, information for uh, applications that allow for continuous wireless monitoring of those kinds of parameters, but outside of the clinic and outside of the laboratory setting. And so, so the first platform is uh, you know, a, an example of this. Uh, we refer to it as epidermal, again, like skin-like uh, electronic devices that, that interface with the skin like a Band-Aid or almost like a temporary tattoo. And I'll uh, describe exactly uh, what that platform is all about and how we're using it for specific patent, patient populations, maternal, fetal, neonatal, and pediatric. Uh, where we think there are some real opportunities there. Uh, and then uh, in another stream of work, we're also interested in skin interface, microfluidic lab on a chip type technologies where we can uh, embed uh, sort of micro channels, uh, valves, micro reservoirs, analysis chemistries that allow us to capture microliter volumes of sweat as it emerges from the surface of the skin. And then we can quantitative, uh, quantitatively analyze biomarker concentrations in sweat uh, to use that kind of biochemical information to develop insights around uh, health status and uh, health trajectories. And I'll give you an example of that type of technology and where it's going in terms of product launch later this year. So the uh, idea is to think about uh, wearables beyond the wrist is, is uh, generally the, 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 uh, you know, the focus of our uh, research. Um, you know, I'm convinced that these, these types of platforms are very powerful, but with the electronics in the form of um, sort of blocky units uh, just loosely coupled uh, to the body, it really constrains uh, the kinds of measurements that you can make and the precision and the accuracy and the reliability uh, of those data streams. So very good for sort of qualitative assessments of steps or sleep patterns, but very difficult to, to capture uh, data streams that can really be quantitatively analyzed and interpreted by uh, physicians um, uh, in, in a continuous wireless uh, fashion. So we've been uh, working on new uh, ideas in uh, device architectures, uh, materials, electronic materials, allow you to uh, build electronics that uh, don't involve that kind of rigid, planar, bulky type format, but, but physical form factors that are more compatible with the body, the skin in particular. So si uh, thin, uh, soft, uh, elastic devices that can just stick onto the skin and uh, use the skin as an interface for doing continuous wireless measurements of the kinds of parameters that typically uh, use this type of hardware approach uh, in, in a hospital setting. 
to enable those kinds of measurements uh, continuously, non-invasively, in a way that's almost imperceptible uh, to the patient or, or, or the user of the technology. And so uh, National Geographic highlighted a number of these platforms. I'll just focus on um, two of them. Uh, one of them uh, is really focused on ICU-grade uh, monitoring in uh, neonates and uh, pediatric populations. The other one's uh, in, in this area of uh, sweat diagnostics, sweat analytics. All this research is happening uh, at the uh, level of uh, academic uh, discovery and open publication and peer review um, uh, you know, processes for uh, you know, uh, get, getting uh, the results out. We have a center for uh, facilitating this kind of work. It's highly interdisciplinary for us. It's materials and hardware at the foundations, but you really have to propagate those new ideas out into the clinical community and understand uh, the quality and the nature of the data streams that uh, these, these novel platforms uh, sort of allow. So this is an example of the uh, kind of technology I'm talking about. So uh, skin compatible, skin like you know, in, in the physical uh, makeup and the physical characteristics. So, so very thin, very soft, flexible. Uh, they interface with the skin to establish a persistent physical contact with the skin, but in a way that's completely uh, compliant with uh, natural skin motions and the curvatures and textures of the body. So these devices go on, uh, and because the interface stresses are designed to be absolutely minimal, there's no, really no uh, physical basis for perceiving their presence. Once, once they're on, you sort of forget that they're there, but they, they operate in, in a way that uh, yields clinical grade uh, data streams. And this is a technology platform we've been working on for a while. We published the basic ideas back in 2011, got a little bit better, uh, 2014, published a few more papers. And then from that point on, we've really focused on adapting these kinds of platforms to dress, address real, uh, urgent, unmet clinical needs uh, with, a, with a lot of consequences beyond uh, clin clinical medicine, but really starting there. Uh, and uh, using that uh, skin interface to, to do kinds of measurements that go beyond what's possible with a wrist-mounted wearable. So really precision thermography of the skin, measuring thermal transport, electrical measurements, continuous ECG, not just uh, episodic, but clinical grade ECG uh, continuously. You can do EEG, hydration, fluidic. I'll talk about sweat. You can measure motion, uh, modulus, pressure, strain, optical measurements, various sounds. You can, uh, types, you can measure uh, body sounds as well, so mechanoacoustic type of uh, measurements. And um, one uh, sort of characteristic feature of the sort of research that we do is it's really sort of uh, developed at the level of open-ended discovery academic type research, but ultimately we're interested in broader impacts. And so we do startups and work with large companies, and this is a collection of the folks that we uh, have current uh, programs with. And all of these uh, engagements have happened just through inbound contacts, uh, you know, to our labs uh, by, by these various companies. So this is an important part of uh, what we're doing. So like I said, I'll give you just two snapshot examples of a broader portfolio of activities that we have ongoing in the lab. And the first one is really to address probably the most vulnerable patient population that you would ever encounter in a clinical uh, realm, and that is uh, premature uh, babies, so neonates, critically ill uh, neonates in, in particular that uh, get inserted into the neonatal intensive care unit. And if you go to a NICU, even a level four NICU like the one that we have at Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago, this is what you'll see. Uh, these babies are at a very fragile health status. They require full vital signs monitoring continuously, ICU grade, so that uh, if their health, health status uh, enters a precarious state, then healthcare professionals, nurses, and doctors can, uh, can engage uh, as necessary. The problem is uh, that the hardware is, is clunky and it's invasive to the patient. Uh, it prevents the kind of uh, parental child interactions that are known to be uh, so powerful in the healthy development of a baby at this uh, age of their lives. Uh, the tapes themselves uh, often cause uh, skin injuries because the skin is highly underdeveloped, but the tape needs to be strong enough to hold the biosensors into contact uh, with the skin uh, in the presence of forces that are inevitably imparted to that interface due to natural motions of the baby. So, so this rat nest of wires represents a, a big impediment to uh, safe and effective uh, care of this uh, patient population. So about four or five years ago, we decided if we could make these uh, skin-like wireless devices uh, work at the level that, that we hoped they would be able to, uh, then we would uh, deploy them on these kinds of patients to get rid of all of this stuff uh, and develop a much more uh, effective and humane way to care for these, um, for these babies. Uh, and so this was a, a slide that I developed maybe four years ago. It was just a vision. This is just Photoshop. That's not a, a real set of devices, but to just give a, uh, my students an idea of where, where we wanted to go. So uh, I'll just cut to the chase. I won't get into, into any of the details, but it turns out you can do all of that. Uh, you can do it with a wireless battery-free device platform using NFC technology. 
uh, that's present in uh, you know, most smartphones these days. Uh, it consists of uh, a binodal pair of devices to capture all the vital signs. One goes on the chest. This is capturing uh, clinical grade ECG, uh, as you can see here, wirelessly in a skin-like format that's skin safe and eliminates the wires and the, uh, and the strong adhesive tapes that, that are problematic. Uh, in the NICU. And in all uh, cases, we're measuring the babies with these devices simultaneously capturing uh, data using the conventional old uh, wired hardware approaches as well. And you can see the kind of quantitative comparison that uh, we're able to achieve. So this is clinical grade data. From that ECG uh, information, you can determine heart rate, heart rate variability, respiration rate. There's also a temperature sensor built into this platform, very low thermal mass, so we can actually track the temperature very accurately and develop a uh, a good estimation of what core body temperature is. But that's not all that you need to measure, and you need to measure everything, uh, otherwise it's just not, not an effective platform. You also have to measure uh, blood oxygenation. And so that requires a different type of interface to the skin, not an elect uh, electronic one, but an optoelectronic one. And so we have, an, again, a skin-like, uh, battery-free uh, device uh, that embeds two LEDs, one in the red, one in the IR. They flash on and off out of sequence. Uh, there's an embedded photo detector here that measures the backscattered light and continuously streams that data wirelessly to an external recording unit. So we're doing full photoplethysmography, and from that type of data stream, you can determine blood oxygenation. So you can put it all together. Uh, we develop a, a software interface that really replicates the GE Dash interface that the nurses are familiar with, down to the colors that we're using and the font uh, sizes and, and types that we use uh, for readout. This is SCG. Uh, that's ECG, that's the red and the IR channel of the PPG. Uh, and we've deployed these devices onto more than 100 babies uh, in Lurie Children's Hospital in an uh, active operating uh, NICU unit. Uh, down to 26 uh, weeks gestational age, just to uh, orient you, 24 weeks uh, age uh, corresponds to the edge of viability, so about half of those babies don't make it. So this is about as fragile uh, of a patient that you will see in a hospital uh, environment. The devices work uh, extremely well. Here's a, a device on a 31 week uh, uh, old baby. This hand is uh, Aaron Hamvas, who's head of neonatology at uh, Lurie Children's Hospital. So this is the type of thing you can do. Uh, you can extend it out into the pediatric ICU as well. There's the device on the chest. There's the one on the, on the foot. These patients also require continuous monitoring. This is a, a picture of a baby uh, engaging what's called kangaroo care. So this is a kind of skin-skin uh, contact that's known to have a very therapeutic uh, benefit, strong therapeutic benefit uh, to the development of the baby. So we're, we're an academic group. We publish everything, peer-reviewed um, you know, science at the very highest levels, uh, interdisciplinary in terms of uh, various engineering disciplines, but we also embed the, our clinical collaborators in these uh, studies as well, dermatology, neonatology, and pediatric. And the nurses are the most important people. It turns out if they're not bought into the technology, you can't get anywhere. So we have three or four uh, uh, NICU nurses on that paper as well. So we're deploying. Uh, we started uh, in uh, October. <coughs> we're funded by the Gates Foundation, the Save the Children Foundation, to deploy these devices into resource-constrained settings where there are, all, are no monitoring technologies. So we're in Kenya, Zambia, Ga uh, Ghana, India, Pakistan. Uh, as well. This will be a, a 10,000 unit uh, deployment over the next um, uh, 12 months or so. This is a training session uh, for the first deployment back in op uh, October. That's the first patient. It's a, it's a maternal, fetal, neonatal, pe pediatric all the way through. So with the last uh, two, three minutes, I'll shift gears and move to a different uh, platform. We're really focused on biochemical cues and, uh, and information around physiological health. Uh, and it really uh, is enabled by a soft sort of microfluidic technology that, that allows us to capture very tiny volumes of sweat uh, and then embed within this platform color changing chemical reagents that allow us to determine concentrations of various biomarkers in sweat as a relatively underexplored bio class of biofluid, but one that has a tremendous amount of information content associated with it. So this is glucose, lactate, pH, uh, and chloride concentration. We're also measuring local sweat loss and sweat rate into these uh, platforms. And it's all based on a color change, so you don't really even need any electronics at all. These are low-cost disposable patches. You put them on your skin, and you can just watch uh, via color change what your sweat chemistry is doing and also how much sweat you've lost and what the local sweat rate is. So you can imagine lots of applications in clinical medicine. That's our primary focus, but there are a lot of uh, ancillary associated applications in sports and fitness. And so we've been contacted by a number of professional teams. This is a set of devices on the starting running back uh, for the Atlanta Falcons, where you can uh, capture uh, sweat loss as a way to sort of quantitatively manage rehydration events. 
uh, in, in, in a way that, that's uh, you know, keyed to local sweat loss, which correlates to full body sweat loss. And you can measure chloride concentration as well, so you can determine the loss of electrolytes. So we're talking about replenishing uh, lost sweat, you want to replenish the electrolytes as well. We've done uh, baseball, uh, you can do a swimming, these are uh, compatible with uh, aquatic sports as well. And as you might imagine, a company like Gatorade is very interested. So we have a joint development program uh, with Gatorade, very excited about that relationship. This will launch commercially in the summer. Uh, it's in limited release to Gatorade teams currently, but this is the device. It provides uh, the Gatorade consumer uh, an indication of how much Gatorade they need to drink and what formulation of Gatorade matches their body chemistry in terms of sweat electrolyte concentration. There was a, a nationwide series of uh, commercials uh, that uh, Gatorade launched about this time last year involving uh, our device on uh, celebrity athletes. This is uh, Serena Williams, that's 105, 104 million views on YouTube, which is pretty good for a science nerd like myself to have my device featured at that level uh, in, in a commercial spot. So that's all the time I had, that's 15 minutes. So I talked to you about uh, skin-mounted electronics, skin-mounted microfluidics as maybe a bleeding edge next generation uh, stream uh, you know, of activity in, in wearables, at least ones that we're very excited about where we have clear uh, manufacturability and large uh, partners to, to uh, deploy at scale. So we just want to uh, acknowledge the, the engineering collaborators, the clinical collaborators, uh, and the great team of students that do all the work. Thank you very much.